this incredible. We managed to come all the way out onto the western side of Arethusa and catch up with the Inkuhuma Pride lazing in the beautiful morning sun. And you can see that it is a very lazy start to the day. We've got the one line is flat on her back, completely passed out. And then the little cubs that are just starting to wake up a little bit. They have, I think, heard in the background, because we're very, very close to the Arethusa itself. I think they're busy cutting the lawn. So in the background there is a lawn mower going, and I think that's what they've heard. And that's why they're so awake and are very curious as to what this noise is. There's also a little bit of a grooming session going on. So last night after eating that impala that they had, or so as I say the early hours of this morning, there'll be little bits of meat and little bits of blood that they're getting rid of and so nothing like getting a good cleaning from your mum. Now because we're all the way out at Arethusa we're having a few issues with our communication so just trying to get our comms right so that I can actually hear Lou and not have to try and type and use my cell phone to hear her or to know what's going on. But isn't that spectacular? Look at how incredible that is. And the light this morning is so beautiful. Oh, you see that tick there, Viam? On that whisker line, she has a tick. Now, with all the long grass that we've got currently at the moment, it's inevitable that these cats are going to pick up quite a few ticks. I know Steph was complaining about them last night, saying that they were on his arms. And so they latch on around there. But luckily, or unluckily for the tick, is that being around the whiskers is where the tongue can reach. And so I'm sure that tick is going to, unfortunately, get pulled off quite quickly. Which is nice for the lioness, but not very nice for the tick. The tick will be thoroughly unimpressed. But you can see it there, just between the whiskers, it's latched itself on. And it seems quite fat, so it's already gotten a little bit of blood out of this lioness. But you can see she's using that rough tongue just to get rid of any parasites that may be on her. And that's part of this grooming process. I wouldn't be surprised we're going to see them all starting to stand up and move to exactly where the um, cubs are. It's probably quite shady in the background there. And this light is just starting to hit where they've been lying this morning so far so it's obviously getting a little bit hot for them I can feel the sun on my back is starting to heat up a little bit and that's why they are all going into the shade you see the other lioness in the background there is just moving around a bit just eating a little bit of grass and so this is quite common for lioness or lion should I say after they've had a good meal you'll find that sometimes they eat grass and that will trigger them to often regurgitate which means they get rid of all the bone and fur and hooves that they are unable to digest and it just keeps their stomach in a very healthy condition so it's not uncommon to see grazing lions it does happen from time to time I promise you they are not vegetarians like I said this morning some of you were lucky enough to see on the Arethusa Dam Cam them killing a impala and feasting on that. But an impala between all these lionesses is very, very little. It's not going to, or all these miles, including the cubs, it's not going to go very far, in, unfortunately. So you'll find that the cubs are going to be still probably quite hungry. But with their pride during the summer months you'll often find this is what happens is that the lions start to go into a situation where they will start feeding more and more of smaller prey animals and they'll then start hunting things like impalas and kudu until the winter comes because at the moment now the buffalo that are in this area because of the grass that's around they've fed so heavily on that grass that the buffalo have become very strong and very powerful whereas when uh, comes into winter because of the lack of grass the buffalo lose condition and so they'll then start turning their attention more towards buffalo. Now, Sam you're wondering if male lions care for the cubs they don't actually they I suppose they do in a way 
actually. They, they are territorial and, and they hold the territory, which means they keep other males out, which ensures the safety of the cubs with the pride that are within that boundary. So as long as they're actively protecting that area, then they are keeping those cubs safe. But in terms of actual day-to-day -day fathering, if you want to call it, so providing food or protection, um, day to day, then generally no, the males are very seldom actually with the pride. The Birmingham boys, as far as I know, haven't been with these females in a, over a week. And so the only reason that they are caring for the young is by just providing a safe territory for the Inkahuma females to be able to move around in without any stress or strain and to be able to keep their cubs safe from that. But the actual mothering and looking after the cubs in terms of day to day feeding is all done by the females. The males themselves play no part in that. But look at this grooming. Isn't this amazing? And like I say, the light is perfect. It's just the soft golden morning light. And it kind of lends to the mood of these lions. So that little misty morning, it's a sort of slow, sleepy morning. And these girls are just kind of taking it easy. I wonder what's piquing the interest of the one in the back there. She's still sniffing around at her bush, still kind of looking and seeing. And there's one cub that's curious as well, wants to know what mom is up to and why mom is in that area. You can see it's also got its nose up, sniffing around. So it's probably wondering what's going on as well. But isn't this amazing? It's always so good to catch up with the Nkuma Pride there pride that we used to see a lot of and lately they've been spending more and more time to the west and so we haven't seen them nearly as much as we would like to so always great to be catching up with them and seeing them again so Aaron it's quite an interesting question and one that is quite pertinent when it comes to lions you're wondering if if they hunted last night and killed will they hunt again during the day well yes lions are one of those animals that are very opportunistic so anytime they can hunt they will you'll find that if let's say a weakened buffalo had to walk past you this pride would go into full hunt mode also if you have a look at their bellies their bellies are not exactly full so even though they killed an impala like i was saying earlier an impala doesn't really go very far and so you'll find that the cubs probably ate most of that and these females got very little you can see her belly is not swollen in any way and if we had hadn't known that they killed that impala you would almost say that they haven't eaten last night so they most definitely if they see any sign of food roaming around here will definitely try and hunt the thing about lions is that they more prefer to hunt at night because of the senses that they have they have very very keen eyesight at night that coupled with the fact that the darkness provides a cover for them and it becomes harder for the prey animals because the prey animals eyesight during the day and sense of smell and hearing is very good but at night that sense of sight is dulled completely and so it becomes the advantage becomes more with the lioness or the lions than it does with the antelope and so that's why they tend to hunt more at night but it's not to say that they won't hunt during the day isn't that amazing look how beautiful that picture is for those of you that like to take screenshots that's very very nice shots in this morning light and those little interested cubs climbing around in the background there as well so some really cool shots that you can send to us on hashtag safari live but they seem quite interested in something i wonder if they haven't heard something else moving around it is obviously because we're very close to a lodge there's going to be people that are going to be moving around between the rooms now we're right off the western side of the lodge so we're not actually got any people moving between us here but still there might be some sort of movement that they're picking up also it could be some sort of prey items we're not too far from a small little pan that animals often like to come and drink at so maybe they've heard something down below close to that pan and that's why they have become so alert you can see all of them have perked up their ears on our f and are facing in the same direction So, Michael, you're wondering how many lionesses we have with us at the moment. There's only three that I can see. So there's three lionesses. It looks like amber eyes and the young female are missing again. So this is not uncommon practice. And the other day when I had them, which was on Tuesday night, was the last time I saw them, we had all five together with the six cubs. 
And then we came to do some of the camera tests that we were doing this week, and it seemed that they had already split during the night. So when we came back after our dinner, Amber Eyes and the other female had split off, and these three with the cubs had gone their separate ways. So I'm sure they will come back together again. It's just at that stage now where I'm sure Amber Eyes and the younger female are either looking to mate or looking for potential den sites. I was trying to look the other day to see if anyone was showing signs of pregnancy, but it didn't really look like it. So it might just be that they're looking for mating, and that's why they've gone off on their own. Look at that. Yes, you are a big little cub. Big little doesn't make sense, does it? But it is looking very flattened. So if you were tracking these lines in a grassy area like this where you can't really see their footprint, you got there. And it's a good way to determine the age of those that area that they've lay in. All right, so we're going to see what these lionesses are busy watching. And while we try and do that and get ourselves into a bit of a better position, let's go across to Taylor.